All right, so now that I've got a pretty strong underpainting, and I can say that because I can see kind of the image I want, even without my sketch being on top, right? But in order to guide it, after I've gotten rid of some of the remaining hard edges, I can then decide if I want my sketch on top or not. And the way I would do that is make a duplicate of my sketch layer, move it on top of my painting layer, and then I could set it on multiply mode, and then just take the opacity down. So that helps to show me where things should go, right? Now where things are falling apart the most, I feel, is here in the neck, and especially these big blotches. And I want this not to draw too much attention. So what I can do underpainting wise with that is to look at some of my reference and simply block it out, right? So take something like this, for instance, same old thing we've been doing. Now it's just a little bit more informed. Stretch it. Now it's underneath my sketch. Actually, I want some of that shadow there. The only place I want that pink highlight is on the rim of the collar. I can, I want this shadow to go underneath. There we go. And then erase out 100% soft edge brush. And once you've got, I've gotten rid of the hard edges, then I can go to a softer edge brush. Take that opacity down a little bit to let it blend in. Take the brush opacity, my eraser brush opacity down a little bit. Shape this shadow a little. That's an improvement, indeed. In fact, I like it so much, I might duplicate it, flip it. And erase away from a copy layer on this side. Try to get a little bit more out of it.
All right. So there we go. So now, now what? Now we can start the more refined painting. And for that, I'm probably going to want to customize a brush, as with any digital painting. So if I look at it at full resolution, I can see kind of the quality of the watercolor and of the paper texture, which I like. That's from my sketch, actually. And of the edges. So I want that nice and sharp. We'll do it. All right. So save my work. And from here, I'm going to merge these layers. Which is nothing I want to delete first. No, I want to lose this. Command E, so now it's all one underpainting. The sketch on top, just one sketch. That's darkening everything underneath. Um, what I can do is actually blur my sketch a tiny bit so the lines aren't so clean. You see that will help soften them. From there to something like that. And this gives me nice guidance for my refined painting on the top. So let's lock these layers, make a new refined painting layer. Again, keeping the foreground separate from the background. I'm just using that paper texture in the background still. All right, so brushes. I need to customize a brush. I can see what I have. And I have these pastel ones. Let's see, you don't want to paint with white. That's a pretty nice pastel brush. But a little sharp when you look at the full pixels compared to the watercolor. But maybe I can modify it. So that's the pastel. Let's go to the brush settings. And let's look at the texture. Let's vary the depth jitter a little bit. Let's vary the size a little bit. The angle is about good, but let's round it out. Okay, and now a lot of it's going to be about this texture. Without it, the brush is just solid, so we need a little bit. I think we want it to be more subtle. Oh, there we go. 
Nice. Okay. And texture each tip. Yes, we do want a little bit more contrast at the edges. Yeah, now that's looking a little bit better. See, quite a bit softer, blending in with its background a little bit more. So if we steal colors with it, and we use it at not a full opacity, Will it give us some of those kind of watercolor finishing effects? Yes, it's a little too sponge painty, painting e for me. So I'm going to turn on scattering. That helps a little bit. Turn off dual brush. I think that will help. Or combine dual brush with something a little more random. That's too much though. Let's see. Something more directional. Yeah, I like that. Well, this is me just customizing the brush, getting the hang of it, seeing how it's going to work. And if I take the flow down, and if I put the smoothing up, so all different things you can play with. Yeah, then I can start to really control it. And get what looks like watercolor. And I wish the size was more specific. So let me um, take that minimum roundness down. There we go. So I can still control it pretty well. Yeah, all right. So I've got a brush I can use. And then, of course, if ever I need to, I can simply blur that brush layer a little bit to take it down. Now let's set that Gaussian blur to be quite minimal. Okay, something like that. Okay, so let's select all of that refined painting I just did to figure out the brush. You see how I'm getting similar effects to here and just delete it. Now I'm working on my refined painting layer. Right over the top, I'm using a 66% opacity brush. And I can start painting. Now, I do want to set up my darkest dark pretty early. And so I'm stealing colors from myself. And I'm pretty much using my sketch as the source. 